Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Hanging with Janky. I'm very excited to be back with you again this week. I just got back from vacay, vacation in the Outer Banks. It was beautiful and wonderful, but now I'm happy to be back home with all my books and my games and, of course, my lighting equipment. So, <laughs> I'm very excited to be back with you guys, filming a little late this week. I did film a little down the Outer Banks of Hanging with Janky. Uh, but I didn't really research, and I was drinking some peach wine. <laughs> and the general consensus is that recording didn't turn out well. So I decided to just wait till I got home, do my research on the car ride, so I can bring you the best quality channel talk and gaming geeky news. Cheers to that. So this week I am trying to keep it short, mostly because last week for my E3 review, it went long. It was like 40 minutes, so this week I'm trying to keep it short. So, in the spirit of keeping it short, I will start moving right into channel talk. Channel talk! What have we got going on this week? Okay, well, first of all, uh, I saw this wonderful thing earlier this week by Total Biscuit. He did a little thing called The State of the Channel, where he talks about all of his series, is on his channel and like what his purpose was behind them and why he has them and which ones are going out and which ones are coming in and what his purpose is for all of those series that he has which seemed to me to be a good idea because you should always have purpose behind what you're making otherwise it's just whatever and of course for me i have my hanging with janky which i love and I think you guys love too. That is my most popular series, is when I just sit here and... Ramble. I'm saying ramble. ...about things. Then I also have Demo Day, which is also... Well, not also popular. <laughs> it's not as popular, but I like it because it gives me a chance to just play, you know, demos of games to see what's new or what's coming out. And of course, I don't play a lot of the new ones right now uh, because I don't... A lot of the new ones are... They don't work for Mac. <laughs> So, so that's a problem for me. But I, I enjoy it, so I'll probably keep going with that one. As for newer series, I mean, most of what I do is just... I, I do Let's Plays of games that I happen to be interested in. Uh, and then I have Beleaguered with Pike, which is a very intermittent series, and perhaps I'll work on that. That's hard because, you know, you have to coordinate. Uh, but in the spirit of State of the Channel and working on series is and working to improve the quality of the content on my channel, uh, I am looking to consolidate all of my collaborations under one title. Uh, one title that will hopefully be posted certainly once a month. I'm hoping more, but I want to say guaranteed once a month. I'll do a collab with either something for every nerd or MK or whoever wants to collab with me. If you want to collab with me, let me know. You can find me on Twitter at Jank Shenanigans and on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Janky Shenanigans, which I'll repeat at the end of the video. But the point is, I'm looking to coalesce, uh, coalesce, coalesce. <laughs> I'm looking to coalesce all of those titles into, into one series. Uh, I don't have a title for it yet, which is what I want your help with. I need a title for my collaboration series. Maybe something with co-op or multiplayer, I'm not sure, but I am I'm leaving up to you guys. So leave comments with name suggestions for a series about collaborating with other channels, and I will review them, and we'll go through it together, and we'll vote for the best one, and it'll be a fun thing for us all to do as a community. It'll be super fun. Speaking, speaking of community, interesting news. Well, interesting as in exciting news. Uh, as you know, a couple weeks ago I set the goal 20 subscribers by week 20 of the YouTube channel. So by the 20th Hanging with Janky, I wanted to have 20 subscribers. I am happy to announce 
that we have blown past that goal. It is very exciting to me. Uh, we now have 24 subscribers on the channel. And I say we because I like to include you guys in it. Because I feel like, you know, we're all in this together. Don't hate me for singing High School Musical, please. So I'd just like to uh, thank some of these people. We have Kling Clang and Key Wolf and Savory Kurt and Cranky Nerd and Ninja Bandit and Win Kills Gaming, all of whom subscribe to my channel after after watching a bit of it. Uh, they're all followers on Twitter, and you know I have Crowdfire set up so it like lets you guys know like my channel URL and all that. And these guys checked out my channel and they loved it. And I checked out their channels and they have great content too. So definitely check them out. I'll probably put, I, I, I will, I'll put links to all their channels below. Uh, they all have great stuff. And, and I, thank you. Thank you all to all of you. Clang Clang, Super Geeked Up, Key Wolf, Savory Kurt, Cranky Nerd, Ninja Bandit, and Win Kills Gaming. It warms my heart that we can all be in this together. And that, and that you subscribe to my channel. And of course I subscribe to yours because you guys have good content. So thank you. Thank you for that. And, and since we met the goal and surpassed it, you know, 24 subscribers, uh, the new unofficial stretch goal is 30. Because I decided to go up in 10 increments, that way I'm not asking too much all at once. But 30 by 20, let's see if we can do it. That's six more subscribers. I think that you guys like my content, spread it around, and we could get six more, and then we'll be a community of 30 people. Well, I guess 31, because I can't subscribe to myself. But it'll be cool, and then you could join in with me and MEK and Something For Every Nerd and all the channels that are part of this community, and it'll be a grand old time. So, 30 by 20, exciting stuff. Now, on to actual content <laughs> involved in my channel. Demo days. So I got two up uh, this past week. I got the CM Speedrunners from Hell, which was pretty fun. I was pretty awful at it. <laughs> uh, part of it, I think, is just the nature of my computer and its ability to run these games. So it was moving very slowly. Uh, so that didn't help with a speedrunner game, but it was still entertaining, to me at least, it was funny. Uh, but speedrunner games, definitely, definitely not my thing. And then the other demo I played was for a game called Moira, which I'm actually very excited about. It's in the style of an old Game Boy game, and it's RPG, wizard, platforming sort of stuff. Oh my goodness, I love that game, and I hope you guys loved it too. Uh, my playthrough lasted a while. It was like an hour long. I think I cut it down to like 30, 40 minutes maybe. Uh, I don't know, it was still running pretty long, but you guys should definitely, definitely check that out. Uh, there's a link below, I should put a link below, to their Kickstarter page where you can still download the demo version of their game, but it's greenlit on Steam, so it should be coming to Steam very soon, and I'm I'm very excited because it. I just love wizards and platforming, and I love the way the combat works because your magical ability, you're pl you play as a wizard, obviously, but your magical ability is to mimic other people's magic abilities, and then you can combine them together to get brand new spells. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And the story that they set up in the demo is very intriguing. I won't reveal it here. You should either watch or play for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Beleaguered! Uh, a new episode of Beleaguered went up. That was a while in the making. I hope you enjoyed the pun of the name, Zedliest Game, <laughs> which which I came up with because Zed was clobbering us. It was the first against real people game we played, like player versus player game that we played. And it was a massacre. From a hot second there, we charged up the middle lane and we destroyed um, the inhibitor. We had super minions spawning up the main lane. But their Zed was just out to get everyone, and it did not work out well for us. That, it was unfortunate. <laughs> but definitely, definitely check out the new episode of Beleaguered up on the channel. Um, it's fun. Me and Pike, we finally got our sound issues worked out so you can actually understand both of us. And I'm hoping, hoping, uh, Pike is kind of busy right now with the Ohio Shakespeare Festival, but whenever he's free, 
hopefully we'll be making some more beleaguered and we can get that out to you guys on a more regular schedule but yeah beleaguered check it out armello collab uh i still haven't edited that i haven't gotten around to editing that yet <laughs> i had it with me i have the footage with me i just need to to get it all together but uh i know that noah it's something for every nerd already has his perspective of the game up on his channel so you can check out our game there and of course i'll have mine up soon armello is a very fun game it's a digital tabletop rpg game it and it was described by the co-optional lounge as Game of Thrones with animals, <laughs> which is a pretty apt description. The only thing is, on our collaboration between Noah and I, we um, we didn't do the tutorials beforehand, so we didn't really know what we were doing. It was kind of a mess. I have since done the tutorials, and the game makes a lot more sense to me now. So hopefully, uh, possibly, we'll do another collab on our Mellow in the future, and we'll actually know what we're doing. And perhaps win the game because a computer player won the game last time and I hate it when that happens because then it's just like well then it's like it's not even fun when the computer wins but that should be up soon Armello the Witcher I tried I tried so hard to get more Witcher to you guys uh, before I left on vacation but my computer was having none of it it has to be a problem with my computer the thing is, the program, I couldn't get the mouse to pop up on the main screen. So I couldn't go back into the, the loaded game that I wanted, where I left off last time with you guys. And it was, it was just a mess. It's a mess. And I thought about, like, playing ahead. That way I would have some idea what's coming, so I can kind of, like, improve the Let's Play. So I wasn't just, like, running around forever. But then it ruins all the surprise of what's coming up, and... I don't know. Right now, The Witcher is just tabled until better circumstances arrive, which is so sad because I've been having so much fun with The Witcher. It's been such a great game, but until I get that figured out, I, I really can't do anything with it. Which actually brings me to the next thing. I'm in the market for a PC. <laughs> My poor old Mac has been making noises for the past few weeks. Um, it's had some trouble running programs, and I think part of that is just all the programs I've been trying to run on it, but at the same time, it's probably time to get a new computer. I've been saving up some money, so I'm, I'll probably be investing in a new computer. Uh, probably a desktop. I'm thinking about a desktop because I know those are more powerful than gaming laptops. Um, the only thing is... There's only one place for me to plug in a desktop here, which isn't up here. And I would have to do it down in the den. But it should be fine, because really, Demo Day is the only series I really do the webcam with anyway. Because, I, I don't know. It The webcam is fun, because you get to see my reactions, but at the same time, I hate blocking the, the visuals of the game with my face. <laughs> so, so, it's sort of that thing, which is why... I've just kind of limited it to doing it during demo day right now. I've been thinking about maybe throwing myself into Beleaguered. I don't know. I don't know. That's just something I'm playing with right now. But more importantly, I'm in the market for a gaming PC. A lot of people say that building it yourself is more for your money, which I totally understand. But like I've said before, at this point, I don't feel like I know enough about computers to really build my own. <laughs> I do have a friend who built her own and she offered to help me, but I don't know. It's sort of, uh, I don't know. I, so right now I'm just looking at pre-built models and hopefully I'll have something soon and then I can get around to bringing you guys better content because that's really what I want to do. I want to bring you guys good content like a good YouTuber. Oh, is that all? Oh, oh, cool. Oh, I do have one more thing. Uh, this week, surprisingly, for the, oh gosh, this is bad, but what, what day are, what week are we on? 12? Are we on 12? I think. <laughs> for the 12th episode of Hanging with Janky, uh, as you may know if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, I have always opened myself to, to questions or comments or shoutouts or whatever you guys want. I am more than happy to, to do it on here for you. Um, 
and I actually got some questions this week. So I decided to answer questions in a new segment called Ask Janky. Yeah, so you guys ask me questions and I answer them. So without further ado, let's answer some questions. My friend Hannah, did you bring home any fun trinkets from vacation? Well, you know, I got this nice Outer Banks hoodie and I got this schmancy new mug that holds a ridiculous amount of tea. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, I got a frickin' sword. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this thing! Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, I was so happy. I couldn't even begin to describe to you the amount of happiness I had at getting a sword. <laughs> we went to this Blackbeard exhibit because Blackbeard, um, Blackbeard worked off the coast of the Outer Banks. So we went to this Blackbeard exhibit and they had a whole bunch of swords. And this is actually forged in Spain uh, by a company, I can't think of their name right now and all that stuff is put away right now. Um, but they make replica weapons. So they also have replica guns and other kinds of swords and like axes and things. I mean, they make a ton. But this is the Pirate Cutlass and it comes with this leather scabbard, and it's actually made of, of real steel. It's not sharp, except on the end there. It, it's sharp on the end, um, but the edge isn't like cutting sharp. If you really wanted to, you could probably scratch someone with it if you put enough force behind it, but it's not like, it's not like a cutting edge kind of sharp, but it's still, oh, it's so cool. And I'll probably hang it, uh, up here somewhere I don't even know whenever I get hooks for it but yeah that's the fun thing that I brought home I got a sword <laughs> sword oh god next question what was your favorite part of vacation see aforementioned sword okay another one from Hannah uh, what's your favorite song from Phineas and Ferb oh see this is actually funny cuz during vacation, when I was stuck inside with Sunburn, I totally watched Phineas and Ferb because it's a it's a fun show. If you haven't watched it, I highly encourage it. It's it's entertaining for all ages. As far as my favorite song, I do enjoy Aerial View of the Area on our Aerial Area rug. That's a fun one and a bit of a tongue twister. But if I had to go with my favorite, the only one I actually I do own one. I own one Phineas and Ferb song in my iTunes, and it is Gitchy Gitchy Goo. It is one of the first songs they did. It was during the episode where literally what they did, literally their goal for the day was to make a one-hit wonder. <laughs> and the one-hit wonder was Gitchy Gitchy Goo. So if I had to pick a favorite Phineas and Ferb song, it would be that one. Gitchy Gitchy Goo. It's a good song. Check it out. Look it up. It's good. Madison asks me, how do you feel about Toriel from the Hobbit franchise? Um, I don't know who that is, unless, wait, is it, is it that, is it that girl elf that they threw into the movie? I will say that that was completely unnecessary. Yes, yes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that the actress is a very nice person, but it's completely unnecessary to have that in there. The Hobbit is a perfectly good book that stands on its own two feet, I'm holding it upside down, that stands on its own two feet and its own merits, does not need some sappy love triangle thrown in by, no, I was holding it right side up, does not need some sappy love triangle thrown in by the screenwriters to make it work. It was a perfectly fine story all on its own. So no, that was not needed. Uh, no. Okay. There, uh, no. Just no. 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 The Hobbit would have been fine without, without Toriel. No. Okay. So I think that's all for channel talk. And I see that I'm already at like 20 minutes of record. <laughs> so <laughs> I was trying to keep it short, but you know me, I ramble. So anyway, let's move on to geeky news. 
All right, so what have we got this week? I, I don't have as much geeky news as I've had the past couple weeks, uh, mostly just because, you know, with vacation and everything, I haven't been up on top of everything. Plus, I noticed that, particularly in gaming news, everybody's still kind of reeling about E3, so there's not a lot of new stuff going on this week. I mean, there is some new stuff, but nothing, like, major, I would say. Anyway, let's get right into it. Steam Summer Sale is going on right now, and I am just overwhelmed by, by the number of games on sale right now. I don't, I don't even know which way to turn my head. Like, basically everything on my wish list is on sale, and I don't, I don't even know what to buy. Like, I'm thinking about Undertale, because I never played Undertale, and the thing is, I feel like enough people have played Undertale that no one would really want to watch that video, but at the same time, I feel like I have to play, because I feel like Undertale is some big part of the gaming community. I don't know. You know, I've always considered myself a gamer for, like, years, but the thing is, I always had Nintendo systems, which didn't encourage online player player, and I, I hardly ever played PC games. If I did, they were just CDs. So even though I'm not new to gaming, I feel very new to the gaming community. So being a part of this community now, it's sort of like, I, I kind of want to know what's going on with, like people reference things and I want to I wanna play those things so I, I understand the references, but at the same time, I want to keep moving forward because I don't want to fall behind with the new stuff. I don't know. That, I'm sorry, that's completely off topic, but that that's literally my internal struggle in, in deciding whether or not to buy Undertale. <laughs> so, side tangent about me as part of the gaming community and as a gamer. But no, Steam Summer Sale, uh, uh, Omnibus is on sale. I, I, I really want that game because it just looks hilarious and ridiculous. Um, I, don't, I don't even know. There's just so much on sale. I don't even know where to begin. I will say, I saw this great thing from Total Biscuit. I'll put a link to it below. I have a lot of links on this video at this point, but I'll put a link to it below. Um, it's 20 games to check out during the Steam Summer Sale. So he basically goes through ones that he thinks are quality games and are also on sale like 70-80% off. So that was definitely helpful to watch that. A lot of the games aren't necessarily games that I would be interested in anyway, but I did see a couple that I found very interesting, so I'll probably check those out. But I would definitely recommend checking out his video, because that gives you an idea of some, some good games out there to, to buy and play during the Steam Summer Sale. So yeah, Steam Summer Sale, crazy stuff. Alright, Breath of the Wild. Even though I totally did a rant about this one on the last Hanging with Janky, let's go back to it, because people are still reeling from it. A lot of people are saying that it won E3 because it is easily the most talked about. The, the most interesting thing to me is that Nintendo, I feel, totally took a chance on this, because they said that this is the one game they were doing at E3. And they did have some stuff from Pokemon Sun and Moon, they just kind of like showed some stuff off, but this was like the game that they focused on, was Breath of the Wild. And shockingly, that chance totally paid off. It is like the talk of the town, and I totally get it. Oh my gosh, like, I love Legend of Zelda, and, 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 it, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, 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 every moment I was just melting down about the entire thing. It just looks, and I've heard so much stuff. Everybody's talking about, like, the shrines. There are, like, a hundred shrines that you go to and pursue these challenges. And if you watch any of the demos, there's, like, this old man you meet right at the beginning. People have been wildly speculating about who he is. Everything from King of the Red Lions to, to Ganondorf, who is somehow separated from Ganon. Apparently, the plot is that uh, they trapped Calamity Ganon, who I'm assuming is, you know, Ganon. And they trapped him in Hyrule Castle, and I guess you have to defeat him, but I'm not sure. And then maybe Ganondorf is the old man trying to fuse back with Ganon, like, using you in some way. I don't know. I heard one really interesting theory that about the timelines for this game, that this, this game is following the adult timeline, so the Wind Waker timeline. And the, the reasoning for that, first of all, you have the Koroks, who look like they did in Wind Waker in this game. They make an appearance and they look the same. And then the other thing 
is that the Koroks in Wind Waker said that they had a plan to grow a forest that would recede the sea. So people think you have Wind Waker and then uh, the crew from Wind Waker goes off into Fat Phantom Hourglass and then they find new Hyrule and Spirit Tracks happens. So this one might happen in the original Hyrule and all the water is drained away. So now you're left with, with this thing. I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even know. All I know is that in the demo, you meet the old man and he points out these ruins and it is definitely the Temple of Time. Like, no question, this man is pointing out the Temple of Time, but it is in ruins and it's crazy and where's his green tunic? Who knows? But it sounds like it might be like a boss run thing. Like in Skyward Sword, you had to do the boss run to get the Hylian shield. It, people have been speculating that maybe you need to defeat all 100 shrines and then you get the green tunic and the green tunic is good for like everywhere because you need to change your clothes you need to put on like warm things for this and cool things for that and then sometimes you need to wear armor sometimes you don't and then um people speculate that maybe the green tunic is like some sort of catch-all for that clothing thing um so you have to like work for it i don't even know and then apparently the map is nine times bigger than the skyrim map which is just ridiculous i don't even know i don't even know i'm just excited to play it and you know what I'll be playing it on? Transition. Nintendo Next. I would love to play this game on Nintendo Next because I don't, as I've said multiple times before, I don't want to buy a Wii U as it's going out of style because just to play this game. So I'll probably, I'll probably buy the Next and play it on that. The thing is, we know nothing about the Next. We still don't know anything. Nintendo has kept us so in the dark about it. Apparently it's supposed to be re released March 2017, and I've heard, basically this, these are the two things I've heard. It will probably support 4K graphics, it will hopefully be uh, comparable to the PlayStation and the Xbox for once. Like, they'll finally upgrade their systems to uh, the same playability power as um, Xbox and, and, and PlayStation. That was a terrible explanation, but you probably know what I meant. Um, and cartridges. I hear that they might be going back to cartridges, which is super nostalgic because who didn't love blowing into Nintendo 64 cartridges in their youth, like an ocarina, right? Anyway, so they might be making the switch back to cartridges, which would be fun. Um, but other than that, like, they tell us nothing. They tell us nothing. I hear that there might be some sort of reveal about the next in the fall, maybe? I don't know. Nintendo's mysterious and crazy. Jumping on, actually, something else interesting related to Nintendo, Smart Boy. So, have you heard about this thing? This is cool. Um, I actually heard about it on the latest gaming news with Dodger, and then I looked it up because it looked very interesting. It is this thing by Hyperkin, uh, who's, who's a gaming accessory manufacturer. They had originally done this as sort of an April Fool's joke, but also testing the waters. It's an accessory for a smartphone, specifically Androids, that you plug in the Android and it turns it into a Game Boy, <laughs> which is so cool. But you know, it's Android only, uh, probably because iPhones, you know, don't like you messing with their programming. But right now it's it's open source. It looks like they're looking for programmers to improve the app. So they're open sourcing the app right now and asking coders to like help improve it, which is cool. Oh yeah, so I totally saw this. Apparently though, you need the Game Boy cartridges. So you actually need the cartridges in order to play the games, which means that for anyone who isn't still nostalgic about the Game Boy, we are about to make a hell of a ton of money selling old cartridges. <laughs> no, I'll never sell mine. I have, oh my gosh, hold on, hold that thought. I got it all. I got the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance SP, and the Nintendo DS. And I was even, look, <laughs> I was even playing Mickey's Magical Racing, guys. No. I'm not letting any of this go. Nope, nope, no. This is all mine forever, and I'm just going to charge it and play it. And maybe if I had an Android, I could play it on that. But no, I do not have an Android, sadly. I have an iPhone, which is what I'm recording this on right now. But uh, if, if you wanted to, I bet you could make a killing off of selling old Game Boy games right now. 
<laughs> to the smart boy if you need cartridges. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised actually, because you'd figure that they just put like an emulator in and then you could play whatever Game Boy game, but apparently that's not the case. But that might change. Who knows, right? I'm also kind of surprised that Nintendo is letting them do this. Nintendo seems pretty grabby about their software and trademarks, so I'm kind of surprised that they're just letting Hyperkin make this. I mean, Hyperkin makes accessories for Nintendo. I mean, they, they make stuff for like the Wii, the Wii U and all that. I'm just kind of surprised, I guess, that they're letting them make a smartphone Game Boy and not at least asking for a cut or something of it. I don't know. I don't know, but it's cool. So check it out, Smart Boy. Anyhow, I'll put a link to that too. I'm gonna have to rewatch this entire video just to figure out what all I need to link, but I'll link that too. Oh, okay. VidCon, VidCon 2016. It's cool. Uh, it happened the 23rd through the 25th, this past 23rd through the 25th, June 23rd through the 25th. And it, it's just a convention that they held out in Los Angeles for for YouTube, which is awesome. They have it every year. They have a whole bunch of YouTubers come in and speak. There were a couple of Vine people this year. It looks really awesome. They were live streaming it, I assume, on YouTube Live. Ooh. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't get to see any of it because, of course, I was on vacation, so I was busy doing vacationing things. But there was a lot of really cool stuff happening. Uh, I know that they had a big gaming section. They had uh, Jack Septiguy, who was doing the mechanics of running a game channel. He was doing an entire panel on that, like the logistics of, of playing games and getting started and all that, which actually I would have loved to have seen. <laughs> that would have been so nice to have tuned into that panel. But unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get to catch it. It probably would have been really helpful too. Oh well. Markiplier was there. Uh, he was doing a panel on how popular YouTubers leverage their popularity to make positive change in the world, which was sweet. But yeah, no, it looked really cool. Um, maybe someday I'll make it there. And uh, Emmy K was really disappointed that she couldn't make it either. Who knows though? It's, it's gonna be a year till it comes back around. I told her, I said, who knows? Maybe we'll grow in popularity and we'll have a panel of our own at VidCon. Who knows, right? It could happen. It could happen. But yeah, no, VidCon. It happened. Seems like a cool thing. Hopefully one day I'll get to go. Moving over into movie geek news. Finding Dory has premiered. Uh, I am, of course, a very big Disney fan. Uh, and plus, Ellen DeGeneres has been hyping this movie for the past 13 years. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hopefully it's good, and from what I hear, it is. It has a 94% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone who I know who's seen it has been like, oh, it's amazing. Plus, have you seen that cute little gif of Baby Dory going, I like sand. Sand is squishy. Oh my god. It's adorable. Yeah, so Finding Dory, hopefully I'll get to see it soon. It looks awesome. Finding Dory, it's a thing. Finally, it's a thing. Plus, anything with Ellen DeGeneres in it is just remarkable. Plus, they have like half the cast of Modern Family and ton Oh my gosh, they have so many popular people in this movie. There's no way it could be a miss. And it isn't, as far as I hear. So, it actually, it actually took out, like, what? Independence Day Resurgence? Apparently, Finding Dory has just creamed Independence Day Resurgence, which is hilarious. Anyway, oh, other movie news. Apparently they're making a Legends of the Hidden Temple movie. Look, I love Legends of the Hidden Temple. That was my favorite Nickelodeon game show, and I am severely disappointed that I never got to be a green monkey or a purple parrot or a silver snake or a red jaguar or a blue... No, red lion? Blue jaguar? Ah, oh, why can't I remember? No, one of them was an iguana, right? Was it the blue iguanas? Ah. Oh, now this is going to annoy me that I can't remember. <sighs> anyway, apparently they're making a Legend of the Hidden Temple movie. It, it's a TV movie, so I guess there's that. But according to the description... Hold on, let me pull it up. Yeah, I just heard about it because apparently they're dragging out the old Olmec head for it. And Dee Bradley Baker is coming back to voice Olmec, so that's nice. Uh, in March 2016... Nickelodeon announced a TV movie version of the game show is in production with 
people starring in the film as three siblings who break away from a lackluster tour in a jungle find themselves immersed in a high stakes adventure involving obstacles that they must complete in order to escape alive. The film will be directed by Joe Menendez and written by Johnny and a whole bunch of other people. It will feature elements of the original show, including Olmec, The Steps of Knowledge, and cameos from A Green Monkey, Red Jaguar, and Silver Snakes, among others. Original host Kirk Fogg is also to return as a fictionalized version of himself, and D. Bradley Baker will reprise his role as Olmec. So I guess there's that. That'll be fun. I just don't understand how you turn that into a movie, though. Like, I would be totally jazzed if they brought back the game show they should totally do that and maybe if this movie is some sort of lead-in to them bringing back the game show power to them because that show should have never gone off the air it was delightful and you learned a lot about legends and mythology and it was cool and i'm sad the temple guards were scary the temple guards were hella scary whenever those things just popped out of the wall terrifying but the important thing is that they should bring back the game show. That's what's really important here. They should bring back Legends of the Hidden Temple, Nickelodeon. Anyway, yeah. Legends of the Hidden Temple movie. It's happening. And finally, on the agenda for the day, uh, Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses. Oh, this is awesome. So, there is a lovely orchestra called the Reading Pops Orchestra from Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, for those of you who don't know. Uh, pops orchestras are just orchestras that play popular music. And on November 4th, the Reading Pops are doing The Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses, which is going to be a giant concert featuring Legend of Zelda music, which is honestly one of my favorite parts of that game. Like, this, the, the, the arrangements of that music, oh, I have so much of it on my iPod, and I just listen to it. I listen to it on days when I'm like, I don't even want words. I just want orchestrations. And I listen to Legend of Zelda. But they're doing this whole big concert. It has a giant screen where they're playing like cutscenes from the game, apparently. Although, if we really wanted to be honest, they should have someone playing the game. And then about halfway through the concert, for intermission, it'll be a two hour intermission in which the player does all the side quests of the game. Because that's how it works. You complete the first set of dungeons, you do the side quests, you finish out the game. So the entire intermission will just be completing side quests. And then somewhere in there, I got it. For the encore, it will be a boss run. And the conductor will swear profusely. Because, because it, it needs to be an encore, because you don't have to do it to complete the concert but you won't feel like you truly completed it without doing the boss run music. And then the conductor just swears throughout the whole thing because that's what players do whenever they do boss runs. But uh, Le The Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses, November 4th, in Reading, Pennsylvania. If you happen to live or be near Reading, Pennsylvania on November 4th, you check that out. Fun stuff. And that's pretty much all. So... Uh, I've clearly failed at my mission to be brief in this hanging with Janky. <laughs> I just, I, I just, I have a lot of fun with you guys. It's enjoyable to just be able to ramble about things that interest me. And then, and then sometimes you guys respond back on, on Twitter and Facebook and in the comments. And then we get to have fun back and forth. I hope you guys enjoy. I mean, I certainly do. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy what I do here. I certainly do. And that's what's important. And that's why I like the series. That's why I like hanging with Janky. We all have a good time, right? Good times. Good times. And of course, if you had a good time, then you should like and share this hanging with Janky. And if you have something to tell me, you should comment. Because I, I really do love reading comments. I really do. And I respond to all of them. Uh, whenever I get a around to reading them, I respond. So, yeah. I, I, I enjoy. I enjoy interacting with you guys. I really do. And of course you should subscribe. Subscriber goal, 30 by 20, because we met 20 by 20, so let's keep it going, 30 by 20. If you really enjoy what we do here, then you should subscribe, because that means that you like what I do, and I like knowing that you like what I do, and then we all like each other, which is a spectacular, spectacular thing. 
just one big pile of likes. That's nice. But more than anything, I hope you have a lovely day or evening or whenever. Thank you all so much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at Jank Shenanigans or on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Janky Shenanigans. Thank you all again for watching. Have a lovely day of it. And of course, this is Janky Shenanigans signing out. I'm going to have to cut so much of this out. It's... Oh my god. We'll get there. Oh, that's going to be a whole rant unto itself. Whoops, wrong thing. I just shot someone. <laughs> and you can run, you can dodge, you can do whatever. You can do whatever in tactical laser tag, guys. I just walked off a cliff. That's what we call physical comedy. That should, instead of beleaguered, just call this series hot mess. <laughs> and... So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.